This is the Monocast, all about open source marketing automation with Montic. And here is your host, Hecky Gamble. Can you hear that? It's nothing, eh? It's completely silent. That's because it's snowing over here. At least as we are recording. Um, yeah. It's the first time, maybe even the last time this year, that we have serious snow up here in northern Germany. And we love it. <laughs> That's true. Nonetheless. Hi, Leon. Hi, Eki. How are you? I'm, uh, I'm happy. It's, I love the snow. <laughs> it's cold, <laughs> but beautiful. Hello, everybody out there. Uh, glad to have you back. And um, we have a really interesting discussion today about uh, using Mordic. Mm -hmm. and that is about using the scoring, the points feature of Mordic in a sensible way because it's one of the most important parts in marketing automation. I That's think. true. Yeah. So uh, for that reason, I have uh, an interview with Shandan Sharma. Um, and um, before we go there, uh, we have a lot of news for you as always. As always. Yeah, there's a new Mordic version live. It's the 3.2.5. It's been released just a couple of days ago and contains some small improvements, but just a lot of bug fixes. That's it. There's the uh, link to the release in the show notes if you have not installed it yet. Also pretty fresh, been in two new security updates, or three, because there have been a small bug in the 3.2.3, which caused problems while installation. So there's been a quick bug fix about that. And so we have the 3.2.4, the security patch, as well as the 2.16.5, I think, which yeah. both been out and working. Yeah, th those are the ones mentioned in the last podcast. And once again, if you are stuck on a non latest modic version like two point early or three point earlier yeah. um, you always have the option to move to the latest and greatest or you can just install the patch that is also available yeah. and uh, be safe once again and then we have another bit of a follow-up to our last interview about n8n workflow automation mm -hmm. uh, there are multiple players out there we mentioned many of them a new one popped up with a Mordic integration, and it's Integrately. Nice. And the link is for that is in show notes. We did not yet check it out. Maybe it's for you. Let us know if you have any feedback. Yeah. Good. There's more things going on in, in the social bubbles. Um, a lot of good stuff in the forums, specifically. Mm -hmm. One one example is uh, an old topic that pops up one uh, time and again and has been discussed in depth, once again, that was about Mordic behind a reverse proxy. Ooh. Yeah. Technical. If you, don't, if you don't know what it is, and it never bite a bit, but whatever, <laughs> never got you, uh, then, then you're fine. But in some environments, there is a reverse proxy functionality involved or uh, a firewall acting uh, in that way. Uh, bottom line is the, the Mordic system needs to see the IP address of the client out there. If it doesn't, it's uh, it's too blind and cannot work properly. So if you have any sort of reverse proxy or firewall in front of your servers, that make sure it is transparent or make sure to set it to transparent in whatever UI you have. Yeah, yeah, that's a bit nerdy. There's uh, many more examples uh, from the last two weeks in the forums, and uh, I think we would just put a good selection of them to in our newsletter yeah and you can see if there's something in it for you yeah coming from the social social side of things um youtube there's been two new youtube channels around the block the first one is by antonio lazari it's called marketing os i think mm -hmm. and it's in italian so if we have any Italian listeners out there, feel free to hop into that. Um, he should be known for his contribution at the Mordicon, mm -hmm. as well as, I think he released a book about using Mordic. Yeah, the book, the, the book, Mordic book. <laughs> the Mordic Bible. Yeah, that's by Antonio. And there's also a new channel by, I think, Joey Keller. He uh, released his marketing automation, uh, marketing automation show which is in English and you should definitely check that out. It's super valuable Mordic content. Yeah, if nothing uh, if nothing else, do look at the title image because <laughs> that's funny already. Yeah. Uh, and I think Antonio's uh, 
uh, channel and then the, the things that he released so far they have automated subtitles so um, maybe it's worth while checking it out good um, so let's move on and uh, move to the interview of the week and once again this is about using the points feature in Mordic, the scoring mm -hmm. as a very valuable and very important part of your inbound marketing strategy and implementation uh, I found a real good expert on, on this space, basically a really experienced uh, marketing automation guy and that, that is uh, Chandan Kamal Sharma um, he, has, he has a history with, with uh, m multiple marketing automation systems from, from the com commercial side, but has also been around in the Mautic world for quite a while. So, yeah, have a listen. Yeah, big welcome to Shandan Kamal Sharma today. Um, hey, Sh Shandan, how are you doing? I'm fine. How are you doing, sir? Very well, very well. Um, I'm so glad I, we could make it today because we are talking about a fascinating or and very important topic and that's uh, scoring but uh, like always I'd like to start by asking what are you doing um, what is your relation to market marketing automation Mautic and then how did you get there and, and first of all where are you located um, I'm from Gurgaon that is uh, in northern part of India next to the capital New Delhi uh, that's where I live and uh, about you know how do how did I really get into marketing automation and all that? Well, I have uh, you know, been working in the field of uh, you know of marketing technology for over like fifteen years now, and I started as a Java programmer but didn't like it uh, much. So you know I got a chance to work in digital marketing uh, for, for, with a company by the name British Airways. Uh, I was working in UK, and that is where I got you know exposed to digital marketing, and I stayed in digital marketing for a very long period of time. However, uh, things changed and, you know, last four years I thought, you know, kind of switching into marketing automation because things were changing very fast in digital marketing. As you know, this is the beauty of digital marketing. It keeps changing every day. True. Right. So uh, that's what I got a chance to work with, uh, you know, my first project in Salesforce Marketing Cloud. Then I moved to Paradot and then I uh, worked on multiple marketing automation tools and I have a good you know, experience also working in the open source Mautic. Right? Yeah, so that's I've excellent. Working, it's, it's, right. It's, it's so good to have insights in, in, in many systems and, and, and learn and, and, and compare how our others do it and then get the best out of it all. And that's why we are talking today. Um, right. Now, for all who are not completely familiar with the concept of scoring, well, we should start with basics. What, what does scoring means uh, what are the general purposes and what do i need to get started with scoring um so the first step i would say to you know make it a part of your strategy sales and marketing strategy uh, in the most basic form it, it means how do you rank or how do you differentiate uh, between the interest level of uh, the visitors or the prospects who interact with your business in any form it could be a website, it could be an app, it could be multiple channels. Uh, how do you really differentiate their interest levels? I, uh, it takes the subjectivity out of the entire, uh, you know, uh, the, and, and then the guesswork also out of the entire process. So scoring basically is about how do you assign scores or rank to different behaviors of people who interact with your business. Now, this could be in the form of... Uh, Demographic information, you might be scoring people on the basis of the company information, their uh, behavior, online behavior, their uh, engagement, or uh, email engagement, right? And maybe even their social engagement with different touch points that company has. So this is what it actually, uh, you know, means. So you, I won't call it tracking. Uh, this is more like you are kind of uh, trying to understand uh, their behavior and, and kind of putting some numbers around that. Yeah, yeah, and and the the question of what do we do with this ranking is also something to be considered, and and we go into details uh, in a bit, of course. Um, sure. I have heard, no, not only heard, it's it's a 
concept that, that many people pitch um, to do multi-dimensional scoring. You just gave us examples of activity-based scores, but also like demographic scoring. Um, some say it, it's important to do multi-dimensional dimensional scoring, like, like one element uh, to tell how engaged a person is and maybe another to tell how good a fit the person or the company might be. Um, in in reality, in your practical experience, is that something to shoot for, or how, what's your take on that? Yeah, so, you know, uh, practically what we are really doing is we are uh, not tracking it just for the sake of tracking it. We are trying to understand the, the sales readiness of uh, the prospect uh, with the business, right? That is the important keyword, like sales readiness. And uh, for that, I mean, if it if it's just one dimension, that's fine. If uh, it's more dimension that works for the company strategy, then even that is, uh, you know, better. In fact, in my experience with a couple of other tools, I've seen that there's also something called as grading. So they use scoring and grading together, right? Where, is, where, where, they, where they not even score, but they also grade in the, in the like, you know, A, B, C, D kind of, you know, yeah. alphabetically, they do it. So, uh, you know, in multidimensional scoring, I have seen that people uh, don't not only track or not, not only try to understand the engagement with the email, but also how, pe how people are, you know, uh, interacting with the website pages, the landing pages, or the contact us pages, or the home page of the company, right? But that's and all in, in the one dimension, uh, that's activity or engagement. That all, all right. ties into that, uh, which, which leads us to what we typically do in in Mordic. So if we go go practical, um, how what do I do to set this up in Mordic, and um, what's the way there? So how do I come up with a concept first uh, about where to give points and how many? That's where most people struggle in in in. in implementing such a con con concept it's so easy to give points here and there but doing that or turning that into a concept that makes sense and that actually works seems to be a re really hard thing and um what's your approach on that um you know uh in my projects when i work with clients uh you know people uh, and the client have already been asking al always been you know, kind of making this a part of the strategy that Okay, uh, this is if this is what people do, then we can uh, rank maybe something like this. For example, if they are opening an email, uh, we will assign them uh, five points. Uh, if they are saying that okay, they're also clicking on the link, well, clicking on the link is kind of very important uh, behavior. Let's assign them maybe ten points. So these strategies have to be decided before you move to a, to the tool, right? Because the tool is only going to implement your strategy. So even in Motic, uh, you cannot just, uh, I wouldn't recommend to just, you know, go and start, uh, you know, using uh, the point system, which is there. So if you go into Motic, you'll find there is an option of points where you can manage actions, you can manage triggers. And these are very powerful, uh, you know, tools. However, before you move to that, the strategy has to be in place that, okay, for this kind of behavior, these are the points that have to be assigned. And not just that, you also have to be sure about the negative points and the positive points, right? Uh, so those points are assigned in Motic, and then you can move towards managing the triggers as well, wherein you can, uh, you know, use those points to trigger some other kind of a, you know, behavior or maybe some kind of a CRM movement, push to a save CRM, push to a contact campaign, and send an email like that. Yeah. Okay. So you, you already mentioned that there there can be negative scoring, like like. Um, observations that we make and, and tell them, okay, maybe this is less likely of a customer. But um, walk us through the process. I mean, if we if I sit down and say, okay, before I open up Mordic, I need to come up with a concept uh, which actions um, lead to to points and what how many points that are in relation to other points. And in the end, of course, what level of of points lead to some some sort of action but 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 what's my my, my first step in, in creating such a concept was maybe a piece of paper and a pen or so 
Right. So, you know, um, I'll take an example of one of uh, one of my clients and uh, there will be a use case where the client had never used any kind of marketing automation tool, but they really had a good number of, uh, you know, a customer database in the form of their, you know, first name, uh, a name, email address, as well as the number address, phone number and everything. However, now when they got to know about a marketing automation, they just wanted to, uh, you know, kind of initiate a kind of a lead nurturing campaign, some kind of communication with the database which they already had. Now, uh, first of all, they, they decided, okay, we are going ahead modding because of course it is very powerful as well as it's providing all the functionalities which they are looking for. But before they even, you know, imp went into importing the contacts uh, into the modding, they actually started working on the strategy now the strategy basically was that okay we are going to upload all the contacts and then we are going to send the first campaign email wherein we are going to see how uh, these customers how these existing customers respond to the emails now uh, sending an email uh, can also be you know scored but i mean that doesn't uh, make any sense what you should really be tracking was and what we really did was we started tracking uh, understanding their behavior in terms of how much time uh, they spent on the landing page after they click on the uh, mails and which they had opened so we here we have three actions one is uh, opening of an email second was the of course uh, you know uh, clicking on the link and then uh, going to a landing page all these three behaviors were tracked and then this is where the, uh, the scoring actually started we started scoring we started giving points to all these new individuals and then after a certain period of time, uh, let's say for a month or so, we got to know about people who are really, really uh, interested. We could initiate a different kind of a communication with them. And those who did not open email, probably they gave us a chance to kind of send them something better, right? Instead of, uh, the best part was they didn't unsubscribe, right? This is what I say. Yeah. Till the time they are, they are not unsubscribed, they have given the opportunity to have the communication with them to come out with something really, really uh, useful for them, right? So that is how we tracked these behaviors, uh, and then we started communication and some sort of upselling and cross-selling also started with the people who were uh, were very high in the scores. Okay. Um, now the, the the question that I'm frequently asked is: Does it make sense at this point to 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 ask more about the the ratio between points, like like okay, opening is five, but dwelling uh, is twenty points, or, or uh, is, there, is there a good answer you can give on that aspect, or, or rather not? No, I I don't I didn't get the question clearly actually. In the beginning, for many people, it's just gut feeling and guesswork like like okay yeah. i want to give points if they open an email if they um click on a link if they uh stay on the page for more than five minutes um or if they come back for the third time big question of course is specifically at how many places would i give points would you prefer to just a few places or or rather all relevant places and then the relative value of those places. How how do you really determine those, or or get get to a first draft on on uh, this is worth twenty points. This one is worth uh, five points, for for instance. Right. Um, so there is, uh, I would say, uh, the, these points are basically uh, starting uh, the starting points for you. I mean, it won't stay like this always because what happens is that. What I, in my experience, I've seen that when companies start the scoring, and you know, after a certain period of time, they they actually observe that probably the scores uh, should not be the way uh, uh, they they have actually kind of placed it because the sales come uh, the sales team come out saying that okay, this is not it, it's not working. Probably there has to be some kind of a change. Now, for, in the starting, you did give some kind of a point, like uh, depending upon what value that point has for the company at that particular uh, time period however moving forward the sales would come saying that okay this is what is working and this is what is not working and this is how a uh, thing should be so i have seen that uh, depending upon the business model even depending upon the 
uh, time period in certain time period you know maybe some kind of seasonality element also can be brought into the picture uh, the point system gets adjusted always right the people always adjust the points however there comes a point which is that after maybe 2 months or 3 months maximum by 3 months we get to a, a stage where a company say that okay now this is what it is what we had started initially uh, was just to check if things work in that particular way if not then this is how it's going to be because this is what works for the company right and this is what i have seen in my experience uh, when it goes to the science of it well uh, we do try to understand the impact of a certain behavior on the business right so maybe receiving an email or opening an email might not have that impact while clicking on the email has certain impact of course because the engagement is quite high at that at that stage so a company might you know kind of uh, like for example also on the web page just just scrolling is a different kind of a behavior you can uh, score it differently but when it comes to filling up the form now it is a very high level of interest right so we need to use these kind of uh, you know uh, stages to understand the point systems what works for the company uh, scientifically and what really work real in, in reality yeah okay um i have a very practical question here that is uh, that you can give points in mordic um in two ways one is you have a a, a sort of automatic uh, recognition a trigger uh that says whenever this page is visited whenever an email is opened whenever a down a download is or an asset is downloaded this is a number of points um and the other option is to assign points specifically as part of campaigns like when when you this condition is met um then give the person five points um that that's of course very very flexible but also really hard to maintain in my in my view um do you, do you tend to use both or or just like us try to avoid the the campaign option um so far i have not used a campaign i mean i've been i i try to use it but i mostly use the the point system which is to the manage action to manage triggers yeah yeah i'm i'm completely with you in in the the um notion of of a re- periodical review of what you have what works and and also what what um what it looks like let's let's talk about what works for a second um so far we've been discussing how do i collect points but only briefly mention that that there is action taken on 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 reaching a certain, certain level of points so what do i do with with that scoring can you give us some more expa- examples there we did talk about uh, a lead is handed to the sales team or a CRM system etc uh so this marketing qualified lead i, I guess uh yep. what what other actions can, will be or can be taken or typical typical examples are out there so um i'll give an example of uh, an automatic itself i connect it with some kind of a CRM now for example in my case i would maybe use some kind of a cron job to connect it with uh, a CRM now in the crm there are sales people who actually have working on different tasks and different deals right so what happens basically is if a certain point is achieved certain certain degree certain level of points are achieved now this actually that particular lead or that particular contact becomes a task uh, for a sales person yeah. right now now that task could be uh, could be you know simply you know kind of sending him message an automated message or maybe a sales person is kind of just calling right away right because okay now every morning when they come up they see okay this is a list of people who have actually achieved a particular uh, point and then the interest level is quite high sure. it becomes very easy for them as well to kind of then set up okay. a call with them set up an automated meeting set up a calendar meeting and then they go ahead uh, in the process right they actually fall into the sales qualified system yeah. if they really qualify It seems to me like like you've been working a lot with B two B cases, right? Yeah, uh, mostly yes. Mostly yeah. I've been working with B two B cases. Obviously, there's very, there's very very typical to 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 reach to hand over to sales in whatever way um, right. once a certain interest level has been been reached. Okay. Right. Uh, 
in, in B2C, maybe we, maybe we can talk about B2C, uh, about B2C for a bit. Um, um, when you envision, let's say, an e-commerce scenario or, or general B2C, uh, there are situations where, where no manual salespeople are involved, but, but automated actions are taken, right? Um, yeah. Um, in, in B2C, you know, uh, especially I would say in e-commerce, uh, segmentation is already very important. Segmentation are key to the personalization, right? Uh, the more personalized you are with the, with the customer, the end customer in B2C, the more uh, revenue you can see coming your way. So in, uh, in, in scoring, when you talk about scoring for B2C, uh, which is I have seen quite rarely happening, but you know I have been able to create different kind of segments, you know, wherein people, uh, I mean, get emails based on uh, their product interest, their category interest, Right, not just not just typical uh, cart abandonment, or not just you know yeah, yeah. typical you know uh, maybe a, a, a kind of cancellation of a order. Not just that, it gets much deeper into uh, that uh, personalization through scoring. Yeah. You can actually get into the level of exactly what color the person likes, uh, what what you know maybe what kind of a segment the person is interested in what area the person is from so multi-dimensional scoring can be done in b2c and you know a lot of work can be uh, yeah. done using point system yeah which i i think is, is tricky to say okay this person is mostly in, interested in say female uh, clothes or, or male clothes uh, because he or she may be surfing both parts and we want to measure which one they are more interested in so how do i implement that that's a bit bit of a challenge, obviously. But yeah, that, that's a, another example of multidimensional. And custom custom content on the website is one thing. Specific emails based on on this segment is, is the, the other. And uh, let's say we need to send a, a reminder or, or a voucher, etc. That can also be coupled to anything. Like like okay, this is a engaged customer, and it's her birthday her birthday coming up, so we send them a birthday email, and others wouldn't get yeah. a voucher for that. Etc. Etc. So that's an endless, um, and that that also brings me back into what works for the company and what not. That's um, another part of the review, and, and I think it's a fascinating uh, challenge to determine who should be part of the review. You already mentioned that you like to involve salespeople, not just marketing people. Um, in the end, what they see is is just what comes over to their side. So they want to expect a good quality of of the leads that come into sales and, and whether we if we have bad quality um they can tell if we are missing out on some others like they are engaged but we don't notice they will never notice um so so those those meetings are are interesting for everybody and also very creative like like okay here are new ideas uh on on, on possible actions so that's also also a typical outcome of those reviews so highly recommended um, right. Do you have any any wishes or suggestions for the future of scoring in Mordic? Like improvements? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, it, it works perfectly fine for me. It's just that, you know, out of all the uh, uh, 11 or 12 tools I have worked, uh, I have seen that everywhere is mostly called scoring. Only here is called points. So uh, if that is one thing that could be something which can be taken into consideration. Otherwise, everything is just, it works perfectly fine. Good, very good. Um, on a little side note, um, we, we did talk about, I mean, when we talked earlier, you, you mentioned there's a connection between scoring and account-based marketing. Um, I think th this thing comes up time and again. So, so um, Please tell me a little bit more of, about that cross connection and starting with what's your definition of account based marketing to begin with. Sure, uh, you know, uh, account based marketing and you know, uh, ABM primarily is about where you are not not just following individuals. However, you are actually working around particular accounts, particular companies, and then and then you are going after people who are within those particular companies. Right now, this scoring system can actually you know uh, completely shift uh, completely shift this entire thought process of a company so to not just not just be after the individuals but also after the companies so uh, 
all these all these like even in Motic I I know that there is there is way which we can through which we can understand the behavior of companies. Uh, though these are not individuals, uh, but people who are coming from the company itself through their email addresses, people you can track that. Okay, this is the, this company interacts. Uh, um, uh, people from this company come come a lot to our website, right? Or maybe they they come a lot to our uh, in different kind of pages, and they are interested in some kind of services which company is providing. Again, I'm talking from the perspective of a B two B. Yeah, sure. Now, um, this is where you can also start kind of scoring a companies, right? In terms of exactly which companies are more, you know, are more towards uh, requiring requiring our services, the company, the company services, and then the entire sales team effort could actually be uh, concentrated towards that particular company instead of just going around all the other companies which you have in your database. Cool. Um, did you already, already implement such a thing? Like like um, individual scores uh, go into company scores or, or whatever the logic is? Yes, I have implemented that, but not in Motic. I used uh, some other tool which is HubSpot for that. Mm. Yeah, so that would be an interesting uh, challenge or, or problem to solve uh, with existing technology, but probably probably a very easy enhancement, and maybe an actual suggestion for future improvement, like like we just said. Very cool. Um, rounding it up, uh, what's your overall message to our listeners, and uh, anything anything else that you want to add there? Sure. Um, so you know. Uh, you, using scoring takes the guess, guesswork out of the sales and marketing efforts, you know, and it provides a lot of clarity about the prospect and how we can talk to the prospect confidently and the probability of that prospect responding to our message becomes very high. So I would uh, highly recommend all marketing technologists and CMOs and, of course, the sales people to make scoring a very essential part of their sales and marketing strategy and then uh, start from there always yeah beautiful okay thank you so much and then for your time and for your insights um where can people find you online yeah i mean uh, I, i can be found on uh, linkedin uh just as such my email will be available okay i put that in the show notes and uh i hope to see you very soon thanks once again um good stuff and uh, we're moving on with scoring so we are going to involve you that's a promise <laughs> And sure, um, yeah, you. once again, take care. Thanks for your time. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, I think in my opinion, the biggest challenge is to yeah, specify a holistic system of when to give points for which action and for which action I want to give like valuable points. Valuable points. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but you're right, of course. The, yeah. the, all this uh, making... Uh, The, the the complete system rather mm -hmm. than just uh, here or there and maintaining that over This time super well, complicated but super worth it yeah 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 we we have our scheme for that is is uh, specifically for maintaining it and and we've been well evolving ours over time yep. and it feels good to have some some systematics to approach that mm -hmm. but on the other hand it, it There's no right or wrong, so um, yeah, we, everybody needs to find his own approach or, or uh, believe in, in something and, and, and inspect and adopt like always. Maybe it's a good topic to, to blog about once, uh, once um, about our own skin yeah, that we can, use. Should totally yeah, do that. Fu future topic. Okay, <laughs> good. Um, now, sponsoring Mordek, we did uh, mention that previously mm -hmm. and uh, we, there are two places today the way you can place your sponsoring and that uh, open collective on the one end and uh, github on the other and uh, there's the option for regular sponsors and time and again we we have a new or, or two of those regular sponsors and uh, that's fantastic and we thank them all yeah, thank you though yeah question is uh, now what happens with all these piles of money that's a good <laughs> question <laughs> uh yeah yeah i hope it's going um, getting more over time and we're not doing so bad and mm -hmm. um of course also in spending uh, also spending m money needs to be organized so yep. obviously this money it belongs to the community it is used for community purposes and that can also involve 
uh, funding or supporting code development without hindering the, the normal uh, code contribution or making it absurd to do something without uh, <laughs> extra money. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's more li like a complement to, to the regular code, code development process. Nice. So a good example would be uh, we need a secure, uh, an urgent security fix or we need some, some big thing that we cannot achieve otherwise or so. Then that, that might be a place. Yeah. Um, the rules for that um, need to be defined mm -hmm. and need to be public and there's a process going on um, to, to get that going. Um, and if you want to be part of that discussion, I would point you to the community team or to the product team where this is currently being discussed and uh, will soon be released as a draft, if, as, if nothing else. Yeah. Uh, and also this ties in into uh, crowdfunding, things like that. We did talk about it before and, and I'm very glad that we have movement, movement in these areas that helps more to get better and helps individual users, agencies, whatever, um, Uh, helps them to open a channel or to, to find a channel, spend some money yeah. and, and uh, get some thing done that they really desire. And that's a really win, 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 win situation yeah. or something. Everybody's a winner. <laughs> yeah, then coming to the last topic for today. Um, just a reminder, I think we mentioned it already a couple of times. Um, if you out there have a use case for Mordic or a success story where you implemented Mordic as your marketing automation system and it worked for you and you've made your own business with that or just yeah, success stories, you can say, um, please feel free to send them to us. We will love to publish them in our podcast and talk about them. Yeah. Or you don't even have to send a written case study or anything. Uh, just ping us and uh, say, tell us if you want to talk about something. It can even be a failure or a failure that turned into excess or anything that, that might be interesting yeah, for please. the rest of the world. So yeah, looking forward to that. And um, uh, we're, we're still collecting cases like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope in, in like two or three months we can start a little bit of a series of... of That kind of thing. I hope so. Okay, um, we're done for the day. Yeah. Um, I think we can now go out, do some sledging. Yeah, or some <laughs> snowboarding. Let's <laughs> go. Snowboy, oh yeah, <laughs> do the Hanover Hills. <laughs> yeah, famous. <laughs> yeah, famous. Okay, thanks everybody for listening. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Cheers.